so to uh, you know, uh, adopt some elegant British language. The, the schmucks. <laughs> the, the, the reality is that I've been saying this for a very long time. After, after speaking glowingly about Jewish unity, I'm about to be incredibly divisive. So here we go. Um, the reality is that a very high percentage of American Jews don't prioritize either Judaism or Israel. And so speaking to them in that language is utterly ineffectual because you're talking about secular atheists who identify as Jewish, that they can be part of the woke coalition and not be considered white. That's just the reality. And it's not the reality, but it is the reality. Now, with that said, a historic percentage of Jews in the swing states particularly voted in favor of the Republicans. In fact, I was talking with a, with a data analyst, one of the best data analysts in the United States, and he said actually the single greatest predictor of size of swing in the vote from Democrats to Republican was percentage of Jews in a particular district. And you, you saw that in New Jersey, which is a state that Donald Trump last time lost by 13 points, he lost by five this time. You've seen it in Florida, which has gotten extremely Jewish, like a lot more Jewish. And Florida went from a dead even state to a state that Donald Trump won by 13 points. You saw it in New York, where in New York City, Donald Trump won 33% of the vote, almost entirely in Jewish precincts of New York. And so the, I, I think that what you're seeing actually in the, in the Jewish vote in the United States is that October 7th was a polarizing moment. And what I've said to people is my tolerance level for not being sort of on the, on the pro-Israel bus, it, it, my tolerance level is now gone. It, it, was, it was barely existent before October 7th, it is now gone. If, if you find yourself, if you find yourself still questioning Israel or, or worrying about whether Israel is shipping in enough humanitarian aid in the most insane policy that I've ever seen, in the middle of a war, you're shipping tons and tons of humanitarian aid in to be hijacked by the very people who are currently holding Israelis and Americans hostage. You know, if, if somehow Jews can't get on board for that in the United States, well, I mean, F them. Uh, like, that, that's, that's serious. There's a point where you're on the bus, but you're not on the bus. And I feel this is true regardless of, of the population. I'm sure the Douglas feels the same way about Westerners in Europe who somehow can't find it in their hearts to defend their own civilization. If you can't find it in your heart to stand up against literally the worst scum on the face of the earth and their defenders on the left, then frankly, I don't want you standing near me, nor do I consider you a potential ally. Let me start in very quickly on answer to this question. Um, first of all, uh, as Ben says, people are shifting. Secondly, um, the 2015 election in the UK was the first time when the majority of British Jews voted conservative. Yes. Before the Labour Party even elected a rabid anti-Semite as its leader, exactly. uh, conservatives in the UK already were voting majority, uh, uh, Jews in the UK were voting majority conservative. And when I told this to my friend Norman Podhoritz, who had written the book, Why Are Jews Liberals? He couldn't believe it. And I said, maybe one day you'll have to write a new foreword for this book. Um, but but there's just one thing I'd say, which I'm, uh, um, I sometimes joke that I'm a, um, a non-Catholic, uh, ultra-Orthodox Catholic, and a non-Jewish, ultra-Orthodox Jew. What I mean is that I share, I share a, a much of uh, a Ben's critique. One of the ways I've noticed in the last year that somebody is going to say something utterly inane to me is if they start by saying Judaism is all about tikkun olam. <laughs> and then I just go... Tikkun oh, olam, Jews, oh, yeah, we know those. So, so, then, so yeah. then, then I know that, that, that the person is, is what I call spilt Judaism. Yeah. It's just some, some, it's fallen over somewhere and, and it's just not really the thing anymore. But I would just also add one thing. What Ben says is so true. A, 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 you have to have minimal patience for the utter maniacs. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jews for suicide types. <laughs> but, 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 but you also you also have to encourage those people who are there, and they are there in larger quantities in the last year. And I just say finally that, that one of the things that really struck me uh, living in Israel for most of the last year are that after the seventh, there's delegations of American and Australian and Canadian Jews and others came through. Israel was the number of them who I met at various things who said to me, you know, Douglas, I don't understand it. You know, I was, particularly this was mainly American Jews, they always said, I was there for Me Too. I was there for Black Lives Matter, and no one's been there for me. And I started to realize the only thing I could say was, well, welcome. <laughs> By which I meant like, welcome to the real world. It was always going to be like that. 
This was never going to be reciprocated. Um, so just uh, use for the